Here is a quick walkthrough of our unit test in case you would like to have some directions read to you while you're taking the test. So for the first three questions, I just need you to answer um, based off of the words that are provided for that specific problem. So basically, this is a reading for detail question. You have shapes over here and you're being asked to write the ratio for the specific um, comparisons here. Okay, for number four, there are five boys and six girls in a group. What are the three ways you can write this ratio? So we have practiced writing ratios using three different notations or we writing them in three different ways, right? So on each of these lines, you are going to write five boys and six girls. You're going to write that ratio in three different ways. Okay. Uh, for the next section, find the missing values in the ratio table. Then write the equivalent ratios to show your work. So basically, this is just equivalent ratio tables. You're filling in your blanks, okay? A helpful hint is to be able to not only look for patterns horizontally, but also vertically. And that's all I'm saying. For the next section, um, kids tend to make oopses <clears throat> on this part, so make sure you're reading carefully. You're going to write a unit rate for each situation below and show your work. So I'm not asking you to just rewrite this. <laughs> Some kids do that. I don't want to see what it looks like as a rate because technically it already is. I want to know how you can take this information and give me the unit rate for that situa situation. So if you pay $4.50 $4 for six energy drinks, how much am I paying per energy drink? Um, if you can run 320 yards in eight minutes, how much are you running per minute? Okay. Determine which is the better buy. You must have proof to back up your answer. So when I say you have to have proof, you can't just look down and be like, oh, I'm comparing Germex to Bath and Body Works. Germex is better because it's cheaper. Like that's not proof. Proof means mathematical um, work shown, right? So show your work for each item. Explain what your numbers or answers mean. So I broke it down for you to kind of help guide you through this question. You're comparing the cost of hand sanitizer from Germex to Bath and Body Works brands. Okay, so I'm specifically asking you how much would it cost per ounce of Germex? How much would it cost per ounce of Bath and Body Works? And then just tell me which is the better buy. Okay, um, so this is more of where you're going to put your answers for each of these questions. Here you have a huge spot to show me your work. And lots of kids will say, well, I did it in a calculator. Yeah, but what did you enter in your calculator? That's what I want to see here, right? Um, what mathematical formulas did you use? Okay, uh, number 12 is the same concept right? Here is a comparison and you're trying to find the better buy. So you are comparing the cost of Smarties and Kisses. I want to know how much does each pound of Smarties cost and how much does each pound of Kisses cost, okay? So these are just kind of be where your answers go. Down here is where you're going to show me your work. What did you enter in your calculator? And then tell me which one's the better buy. This whole next page goes on to the next section of our unit, which was just converting fractions, decimals, and percents. So this first part of the table is literally just giving you one or two portions and you're trying to fill in the rest. So if I say 71 hundredths, what would that look like as a decimal and as a percent? Okay. If I say three and 68 hundredths, what is that as a fraction and a percent? If I say two-fifths, what is that as a decimal and a percent? If I give you the percent, 976%, what would that be as a fraction and a decimal? And then if I give you five-tenths, what's that as a decimal and as a percent? And then the next part, you're still converting percents. This is just using percent problems. Okay, so if you can remember, um, when I say, as always, you must show your work for credit, I want to see your is over of here. 
Okay. Um, if you have a totally different way of finding it out, um, I know one or two of you have. Um, successfully done it. Um, you can explain that here. You don't have to use my is over of. Um, it is the pattern you're going to use in seventh and eighth grade, but if you can figure it out in a different way and it's still correct, you guys can show me that here. Okay. Um, so 12% of 30. What is 158% of 200? 45% of what number is 27? And 120% of what number is 18? And then this last one, I said, read the following question carefully. Kids always kind of make oopsies on this because of the details in the question. So here's your scenario. You answer 95% of the questions correctly on a 40 question test. Okay, so I gave you a test, there's 40 questions on it, and you answered 95% of them correct. So how many questions did you answer incorrectly? Or how many did you get wrong? That's what you're trying to figure out. And the last part is our measurement section. So we're converting all over the place on this page. I do give you a conversion rate chart. Um, these conversions are not exact. Some of them are rounded and that's okay. I rounded it for you, okay? Um, so use this rate chart, this information to help you when needed, all right? So the first part, you're just doing metric conversion, right? Complete the conversions, do not round your answers. With this metric, you don't round your answers, okay? Use the provided conversion chart C above to help you if you need it, okay? Um, so if you look, we're converting um, centimeters to millimeters and grams to kilograms. So we don't need to use anything from the conversion chart up here because the conversion chart is all, um, some side of it is U.S. customary. Okay, so this is just metric. We're not going to use the chart. So this is where you use that mnemonic device, right? Um, kings have blah, blah, blah. Or you could say King Henry, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to tell you because I think you need to know that. Um, but that's how you're going to know how to convert from centimeters to millimeters and 4,000 grams to kilograms. A hint is to remember that you always have a decimal on whole numbers, right? They're just invisible right now. The next part is our U.S. customary conversion. Round to the nearest tenth. So on this, you are rounding. You may get some funky answers. You're going to round to the nearest tenth. So this is a two-part type question. Can you convert? And do you know how to round correctly? We've been rounding a lot this year, so I do feel like by now I need to be able to test you over rounding to the nearest tenth, okay? So this is 74 gallons equals how many ounces? And I can look up here and I can see gallons and ounces in my conversion chart, and I can use that to help me answer my question. The other one is 31 pints equals how many quarts? So if I go up here, I see a conversion of pints to quarts, and I can use that information to help me answer my question. And again, don't forget to round your answer to the nearest tenth if you need to. The last part is a conversion between systems. So we had just metric, then we had just U.S. customary. Now we're converting between systems, and we're still going to round to the nearest tenth. Okay? Um, so... If I have 145 pounds, roughly, how many kilograms is that? So pounds is what we use in the US, kilograms is our worldly measurement and what scientists use, okay? So these little squiggle lines mean roughly, it means about, it means that you're gonna end up rounding, okay? So it's a rough estimate. So look for pounds and kilograms up here. I have pounds and kilograms and I'm gonna use that to answer, okay? Um, on the next one, 18 centimeters, that's metric, right? Meters, metric. Um, and then that equals how many inches? Inches is a U.S. customary unit. I'm going to look up here for inches and centimeters and use this to help me answer, okay? 
And then the last uh, question of the entire test, congratulations, is a word problem. Um, I just thought I would try to throw my real life into this mixture. Okay, so Miss Newell's going to visit her brother and twin nieces for their volleyball tournament. She will drive about 236 miles to get there. So I even gave you like whenever I GPS to get from my house in Lake St. Louis to Platte City, Missouri, which is Kansas City, Missouri area. This is where I grew up. Um, it's It takes me three hours, 30 minutes to get there. And it'll tell me roughly how many miles it will take me as long as I don't detour, okay? So that's where I got the 236. Um, and I want to know, okay, that's how many miles it takes me to get there. I will drive 236 miles. But how many kilometers is that? So I want you to convert it from miles, which is our US measurement, to kilometers, which is metric. And if I look up here, miles and kilometers, I have a conversion rate provided for you. So you can use that to answer. And then the very last part, how many meters will she drive? Well, think about it, guys. If you can figure out kilometers, you can then easily convert that to meters, right? Because we have practiced over and over again how to go from kilometers to meters. And that is your last question, okay? Um, the very last page of this test is just your learning target continuum. So this is just your overall section, like your, your basic learning target is your rates and ratios, right? All of the things involved in rates and ratios. And um, you're getting started in progress and mastery is kind of like just tiering those different skills, right? Can you just basically write a rate or a unit rate? Do you know the three different ways to um, write a ratio? The in progress is more your uh, ratio tables, right? finding missing values in a ratio table, comparing two ratios to determine if they're proportional or not. And then your mastery is being able to find and describe unit rates in word problems, okay? And this includes your better by choices, okay? So your better by questions are here. Um, learning target um, for the next section, I can create equivalent representations of fractions, decimals, and percents. This is the whole section where you're asked to convert between a fraction, a decimal, and a percent, right? So if you notice, getting started is just like, hey, do you know what a percent is, right? Do you know that when you see a fraction bar, it actually means to divide? Are you applying that skill? And then your in progress means like, hey, you're pretty good at some of these. You can convert from one thing to another, but maybe not all of them, right? Your mastery is you can convert everything proficiently. And um, if I throw it in a word problem, you can also solve that, okay? The next part is your percent problems, self-explanatory, right? The section where um, you are trying to find the part or the total, this is your whole is over of section, right? So it getting started is just, hey, can you calculate a percent as a rate out of 100? Do you know a percent means out of 100? Your in progress, again, just means that you can solve some is over of problems and your mastery is you can do all of them. And I can even throw you up a word problem that requires you to use is over of, and you can do that. And your last section is converting measurements. This is pretty easy. Do you understand that there is a metric and a US customary um, system of measurement that there's two different ones, right? Um, can you convert within US customary and can you convert within metric? So this is not any kind of crossover. Your mastery is when I can give you metric and you can go customary or customary to metric, okay? And that is it. I hope this helps you out.